Hey guys, how's it going? Today's video is a viewer request from Keith Dennis asking me to make a video specifically about masking. I've mentioned it a few times before, but I haven't shown exactly how to do it. So in this video, that's what we're talking about. Without any further ado, let's jump into the video. The first step in almost any masking project you're going to be working on is going to be popping into the Fusion tab. So we're going to go ahead and jump in there. So we pop into Fusion grab our microphone clip here. This little crosshairs thing having going on down here, I stabilized this clip. I've got other videos about how to do that if you wanna to learn to stabilize clips. Here we have our media in and our media out. So our media in is the source clip that we were using and our media out is going to be what our timeline displays. So anything we add in between here will affect the source clip and display on the timeline. So our quick masks, the ones that we can get to easily using this toolbar right here, are right here. We've got a rectangle, an ellipse, a polygon, and a B spline. The polygon and the B spline are pretty similar in the way they behave, but normally I'm gonna go with the polygon mask if I have something specific to mask. But to get started, I'm gonna use the rectangle mask. So all you do for the rectangle mask, and once you click on it, you'll get this node, and then you just put your rectangle where you want it to be, We'll just get rid of the plug here. And then we run this mask into the blue, which is the, the mask input on any of your nodes. So the blue is going to connect the mask and then we're going to invert this so that we see the rest of it. So now you see that that's not there, but if we go into our edit so we can see our timeline again, you'll see the clip beneath it through that mask. So if you invert it, you'll see primarily the legs clip, but you'll still be able to see the clip with the little plug. So that is really basic masking, like for picture in picture type stuff. But if you wanna get a little bit more advanced, say you wanna to start to like change colors of things with masks, you go ahead and grab one of your polygon masks and then mask out an area. We're just gonna grab this this red arm here. So we've got that masked out. And then we're gonna go ahead and pop this onto our media in. If you're doing something like this, you probably wanna duplicate your clips. So you'll hold Alt and drag to duplicate that clip. And then this one on top is going to be the one that we want the mask on because we want that to be seen over the one below it in the timeline. So as you look down, like if you made a picture with tissue, each layer, you see through, if, if you remove it, you'll see the bottom layer in its entirety. It's the same way with masking. So go back into Fusion, make sure we have this top clip, and then we're going to drag our mask on there so that it shows up as just this. And then we'll go ahead and grab a color corrector. Hold Shift and drag to put things in a node path, and then it's just in there. And now let's say we want that to be green. So we just drag that to green, and if we go back to edit, we've got one green arm. And you can be as careful as you need to be with that mask when you make it on there. So you can just go around there, down, and then back up to get only red, red areas, or you could be sloppy like I was and get even some of that, some of those hairs in there. But you'll notice that as we move forward, our clip is moving. So we eventually lose that. The nice thing about masking in Fusion is it automatically keyframes things for you. So if you select your mask in your node web and then select all of the points in your mask, you can grab one of those points by holding control and scroll wheel to get closer. And then just grab one of those points and you can move the whole thing. So as we move through our clip, adjust your mask so that it stays with the thing that you're trying to mask. And if it's a rigid shape like this one is, that's a pretty easy thing to do. Not only can you move all of them, if you move just one of them, that will also be keyframed in. So for this last frame, we'll spike it way out like that so you can see what I'm talking about. If we go into edit, and we watch this, so you'll see, see that it moves now with that. But, but then once we turn that off, you'll see that it moves now with that arm as we go through. And then when we get to that last keyframe, it's gonna spike out. And then since we don't have any keyframes after that, it's gonna go back to its original position. Right there. So that's how you can change colors in Fusion, and you can do that with really just any color. 
So you can grab your color corrector, and even if you don't want it to necessarily be a different color, just get that back to zero. You can change the contrast in certain areas. You can change the gain, the lift, the gamma, which if you're at all familiar with other, like how to color correct in DaVinci Resolve, those all make sense to you. You can change the brightness of certain areas. Like if you need to black something out, this is a nice way to be able to do that as well. You can just track that mask on there, change everything to be, change everything inside that mask to be black and then you've got an area that's blacked out. The ellipse mask, same idea. We're gonna leave this color corrector in here so that you can see it. But um, we'll grab an ellipse mask. And we don't want that to be on the color corrector because that won't really do anything. We're gonna drag that onto our media in you'll see that we've got a big circle here. And again, everything in that circle is affected by whatever's going on in this node web. And since we've got that clip duplicated, you can still see what's in the background, not in that circle because of this secondary clip that has no masking on it. All right, so those are these four masks right here. And really for the vast majority of applications, that's all you're gonna need. So if you have something pretty pretty precise that you want to be controlling, you're going to probably want to use this polygon mask and then just make as many points as you need to make to get that thing adequately selected. So if we wanted this to be way darker, you just draw a mask around it like this, except, you know, take more time with it if it's important. And then once that's there, go ahead and slap that onto the media in, and then all the color corrections that we do in here are going to affect that mask. That covers the basics of masking. You just make a mask and then you can make things happen inside of that mask, or you can take it completely out, or have that be the only thing remaining and put that on top of other clips. If I missed anything that you wanna know about, make sure to let me know in the comments down below. And if you wanna see anything like really in depth, let me know in the comments below that you'd like me to make a video about a certain topic and I'd be happy to do that for you guys. I'm here to help. So I hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.